hello family welcome to my channel in today's video i'm going to talk about step-by-step -step process and requirement to apply for k1 visa i have been through this process and i thought i would share my knowledge and experience with couples going through the same journey that i went through several years ago because i understand exactly what you guys are going through i understand what it means to go through a long process like this and i believe this video will be helpful are you ready let's go using my paper so this is it so that i don't forget anything so bear with me okay for the first time let's start with defining what a k1 visa is so a k1 is a visa issued to the fiancé or the fiancé of american citizen to enter into the united states there are eligible requirements you need to meet for you to be able to apply for k1 visa the first one is you have to be married within 90 days of arriving in the United States. So you and your fiancé has to be married within the 90 days of he or she, your alien fiancé, arriving into the United States. Secondly, you both are legally free to marry. That means you both are single to get married. If we have been previously married, has ended either with divorce, death or annulment, but you need to be single for you to apply for K-1 visa. And the third requirement, you have met your fiancé within the two years period. In case you are unable to meet with your fiancé in this two years period, maybe due to religious reasons, cultural reasons, or any other reasons, hardship on the part of the petitioner, you have to provide an evidence to prove your exemption. Let's say that both of you are eligible to apply. Can we start the process or can we start the application now? The first step is the petitioner files I want to deny F for the alien fiancé. So you need to file the application, this I want to deny F for your alien fiancé. Know that you can download this form in the official website of USCIS and I'm going to leave the link in the description. Also, please read the instructions carefully. Don't make mistakes and know that you have to sign handwritten and date the form. SCIS does not accept any electronic signature or any other thing outside handwritten signature. So bear it in mind and please don't make mistakes when filing this form because if you make a mistake, it's going to cost you a bunch. There's a lot of backlogs right now. If you don't know how to fill it, read it carefully and take it to someone that will help you fill it out properly. Second step is a letter of intent to marry. That means you and your petitioner needs to write a letter. One letter from the petitioner and one letter from the beneficiary. This is to show them that your marriage is crucial, your marriage is genuine, you are intending to marry your fiancé. So that's exactly what it means. A simple letter will be enough to prove you are overqualified to marry your fiancé or your fiancé. Clearly, the paperwork must be handwritten, signed. TSCIS does not accept electronic signing or any other related signing. First step is to provide I want to deny F supplements. One statement from the petitioner and one from the beneficiary describing how you guys met. So this is going to be like a story time. Um, we tell them how you guys met, everything about the relationship, how the relationship has grown up to this stage and don't include your romantic or private information. Please don't just do that. But do it in a way that it will be convincing and genuine to anyone reading it. Step four is supporting document evidence of in-person meeting. That's what part four is. So you're going to provide a lot of things to show them that you guys have met in person. The first one is photos of you together with your fiancé. Please, the ideal way is to write a short description at the back of the photo with the date. So write short description, this is the place, it's not just picture, maybe the location and also the date, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so that the person that was going to view the picture, this is when you guys met, this is the day of where the picture was not. Second is a plan ticket in the receipt that indicates that you guys met. It's going to come with the day, the year of the flight ticket, the purchase, the passenger's name, every information that is needed need to include it in the supporting document that you are going to send to USCIS. The third one is going to be copies of chat, text messages, Skype, video chat, and all those things. It helps 
to authenticate the marriage where you guys are discussing about marriage plans relationship plans so on and so forth the fourth one is going to be copies of your passport showing the stamps from you guys traveling together fifth one is going to be like card receipts of you guys spending something together maybe engagement ring all you guys spend during the holiday or the vacation you can gather everything together and use it as a supporting document any other document that proves in person meeting will be great as well and other evidence will be wedding announcements wedding arrangements um if you have any contracts with your vendors like the contracts the venue the hotels and all those things if you have figured it out fine but if not no problem no need to worry but if you have done that that would be great the hotels to include the contracts you have with your vendors as an evidence we have other supporting documents that you need to include outside the evidence of in-person meeting or any other relationship evidence outside pictures other supporting document one is proof of petitioner citizenship proof of supporting document can be valid passport certificate of naturalization certificate of citizenship or birth certificate if you are born in the united states so if there is a name change you have to bring a copy of your change of name another supporting document is for to show that you are single if you have been previously married then you need to provide a copy of your divorce paper um, if your partner was there, you have to provide a document that your partner was there just to prove that you are single, you are ready to mingle with your fiancé or fiancé. Next evidence is to provide a copy of a passport, two times two, in a color format, one for the petitioner and one for the beneficiary. Personally, I would suggest you having two passport photographs just in case or you can send to just in case they lose one or you can keep it to yourself just in case they lose one and also remember to add your name and your date of birth at the back of the passport note that the passport must be taken within 30 days of filing the petition you have to provide a certified copy of police and court conviction in compliance record with embra if applicable so if you have a criminal record maybe in your state or in your country or in the united states you have to provide a copy to show that you are free even though maybe there was nothing done or you didn't do anything but there was a charges against you you need to provide a copy of that because it may prevent them from approving your i want to deny f the next step is to pay for your filing fee and currently the filing fee is $535 but know that in March is going to change and the fee will be $720 so know that if you have to find out rush now and find out you have to pay the fee through money order personal check or cash or check please know that the USCIS does not accept cash at all costs and direct the check to US Department of Homeland Security. Next step is optional. The cover letter serve as a guide to the USCIS officer that will handle your case in the sense that you are going to specify this is the first thing, these are the things that are included in supporting documents and all this good stuff. So the person that is handling it is just like a simplified summary. The next one is from I-145. It's a notification of acceptance. I highly recommend you to fill out this form so that you can be able to get a notification on your phone from USCIS. The next thing I'll say is make a copy of everything you have submitted. The reason to photocopy all your paperwork, one, I will say, they may lose your document. If they lose it, you can be able to, you know, resend it. Another reason is you need to submit everything submitted to USCIS to the embassy, your consulate, your home consulate. So this is going to be an easy way for you to keep everything together, being organized. So you can just, you know, pick everything and then go to the interview when the time is. It's a must to photocopy everything you're going to submit to USCIS. Last step is to send out your application. Before you send out, please carefully review your paperwork before sending. You can pile them up in one folder. Make sure that everything is properly organized and nothing will get lost in the process. Wow! Now you have completed, you have successfully completed the application. Now I want to congratulate you and tell you congratulations in advance because it's going to get approved if you follow this step by step. I hope you find values in this video please don't forget to subscribe if you have not please if you have any questions 
don't forget to drop it in the comment section let's just interact please don't forget to follow me on all my social media i just opened it newly so please be the first person to follow me thank you for watching i see you in my next video peace